Hi friends, welcome to my sewing room. My name is Beth and it's nice to be sewing with you today. Today's video starts with a block, one of the blocks in this quilt right here, and it ends with me quilting it, which I'm doing right now. The only thing you'll miss in this video is adding the binding. I have some videos about adding binding, so you can look back there, or if you're wondering, maybe I'll incorporate it in a future video. So let's get started. This quilt has a beautiful pieced backing. I took some fabric out of my stash and I pieced the back and here's some of the orphan blocks that got a chance to be in a quilt. So let's get started. Here's the block I'm starting with today for my quilt. It has been featured in some past videos my happy thoughts video and it was on my design board when I made that simple design board and the first time it showed up was when I made half log cabin blocks and the block sort of changed over time. So now I'm adding some white sashing, some bars between all of the blocks and the sashing strips for these blocks are three inches and I just cut them the length of those big blocks and then I cut some long sashing strips, three inches wide, the length of my long columns there. And this quilt is three by four. Those big blocks, three of those big blocks by four of those big blocks. And always when you add a long column or sashing between a long pieced, um, quilt section like this, you'll want to pin because things do move. And so I just smooth it along on my table and I pin and then I will sew all of that together. It took a little while to get all of my sashing strips on this large quilt. This quilt is about 80 by 60 for a graduating high school senior. And here it is, all ready to make a quilt sandwich. And that's what I will be doing next. I'm going to take this big quilt top into my living room where the floor space is available today. And the way that I get my pieced backing ready is not very scientific. <laughs> I lay out my quilt top and then I get my chunks of fabric out of the stash. Fabrics I think might kind of go along with this quilt and I lay them out, sort of puzzling them together, making sure that I have, oh, I don't know, at least three inches on each side because I like to have wiggle room as I work. So in this case, the chunks of fabric I found are similar in color, some blues and grays. And I thought I'd be able to use that gray flowery fabric for that whole left side there, but it wasn't big enough. So I will rip that apart. Remember in the days when <laughs> At the fabric shops, they would rip the fabric. Maybe they still do that, but it just rips right down the um, with the threads of the fabric there. And then I have a gap. I have that other chunk there. And when I have a gap, it's kind of fun to dig around in my orphan quilt blocks and 
add a little fun element to the back. So I pieced those orphan blocks together and now I'm going to be sewing all of those pieces together, making sure that each edge that I sew together is straight. So all of those edges, these two edges right here, had to be pretty straight, and then I went to my sewing machine and I sewed them together. And I did that all the way around, piece by piece. It takes a little while, and I made sure that I pressed as I went and now I only have one more seam to go and I pinned this one. It's so long I don't want any um, problems with that seam so I pinned it and sewed all the way down the middle there and then I pressed and now I'm going to check to see how it is and sh it should be bigger than I need. I really like those orphan blocks there in the middle. It adds a fun element to the back, and I love using those orphan blocks here and there. So I got my batting cut about two inches bigger than the top. I laid it out, and then I went to my family room with has a wood floor, and I taped the backing down I added the batting and then I used a spray based 505 to smooth this quilt sandwich together. And I will say I got a workout on the floor. In future, I think I will go back to the table. Sometimes I use the table and just do it in sections and I think the table works better for me. Then I switched out my sewing machine foot and I put that darning foot or quilting foot on my machine. I put the feed dogs down and I started in the middle, made sure everything was nice and smooth where I'm working. And I'm going to do sort of a loop-de-loop -loop pattern all around. Just little loops. making sure that my quilt is not hanging off the edge. It's helpful if the weight of the quilt is on the table and if you can add another table next to you or a chair if your quilt is really big. Then I just quilt it all around and the next step will be that binding. So thank you for joining me today and I'll see you next time.